Dr. Donna Grogan is Clementia's Chief Medical Officer. Her duties include developing the evidence for safety and efficacy of Clementia's pharmaceutical candidates in a targeted disease. Dr. Grogan, how would you summarize this phase two clinical trial? This is a phase two, double-blind, placebo-controlled clinical trial of paliveratine in FOP patients at the time of a flare-up. Patients who are at least 15 years old are experiencing a flare-up of the shoulders, arms, hips, or legs, and for whom study medication can be started within seven days of the start of the flare-up, will be randomized to receive either paliveratine or placebo for six weeks with an additional six-week follow-up period. 24 patients will be enrolled into this study, 18 randomized to one of three doses of paliveratine, and six randomized to placebo. How does a company get a drug approved by the regulatory authorities? The drug approval process may vary by country or region, but the general principles are the same. Data need to be collected and provided to the regulatory authorities on the efficacy, does the drug do what it is proposed to do, and safety, what are the side effects, in the population with the disease of interest. A clinical program typically has four phases. Phase one primarily evaluates safety in humans, typically healthy volunteers. Phase two evaluates safety and efficacy in patients with the targeted disease. Phase three evaluates safety and confirms efficacy in these patients. Phase four, which occurs after marketing authorization, follows up on specific questions that the regulatory agency would like answered. What is paliveratine and are you doing a phase one trial? Paliveratine is a retinoic acid receptor gamma agonist and is in a class of drugs called systemic retinoids. Paliveratine was in development by another company for a different indication, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease or emphysema, and a full phase one clinical program has been conducted. As part of that clinical program, over 800 individuals received at least one dose of paliveratine, and over 450 received up to two years daily dosing. Although paliveratine was not effective enough in emphysema, this program provides information on the safety of paliveratine in humans, and it is this information that has allowed us to proceed forward with our phase two clinical trial in FOP. What is the purpose of this phase two clinical trial? The purpose of this phase two clinical trial is to investigate whether paliveratine can impact new bone formation during and following a flare-up in patients with FOP and at what dose. The clinical trial will also evaluate the side effects of paliveratine in patients with FOP. Paliveratine is an experimental drug, meaning that we do not know if it can effectively treat FOP. However, experiments demonstrated that paliveratine prevented new bone formation in animals, and this phase two clinical trial was designed to investigate whether it might be able to do the same thing in humans. Who is eligible to participate in this clinical trial? This trial is for FOP patients with the R206H mutation who are at least 15 years old and are having an active flare-up. More information is required before children can be enrolled in a clinical trial with paliveratine. And Clementia is conducting the necessary activities to obtain this information, which include additional animal and clinical studies. It is important that patients are examined and enrolled into the trial within seven days of a flare-up, with flare-up locations in the shoulders, arms, hips, or legs. Patients must also be willing to receive treatment with prednisone per the FOP treatment guidelines and not have any of the exclusion criteria. How many patients will be enrolled and how will the patients who are enrolled in the trial be treated? A total of 24 patients will be enrolled in this trial, and the trial is designed in two parts. This is a double-blind trial. That means neither the investigator nor the patient will know which study medication they are receiving. In part one, eight patients will be enrolled, six of whom will be randomized to receive paliveratine, 
and two receiving placebo. Once all eight patients finish treatment, we will review the efficacy and safety data to make the determination of what doses to bring forward into part two. In part two, 16 patients will be enrolled, 12 of whom will receive paloveratine and four receiving placebo. In both parts of the study, patients will have a 75% chance of being randomized to paloveratine. Patients who are enrolled in this trial will undergo a complete history, physical exam, laboratory test, and ECG to make sure they meet all the enrollment criteria. The patient will take study medication every morning after breakfast for six weeks. Patients will continue to be followed for an additional six weeks after study medication has stopped. So the total participation in the clinical trial is 12 weeks. How will you know whether paloveratine is working? The main objective is to determine if paloveratine prevents bone formation at the time of a flare-up. We will be using a placebo to demonstrate whether paloveratine provides treatment benefit and to assess the side effects. Placebo allows us to know if the effect we see is due to paloveratine or to other things, like due to the patients being more carefully monitored as part of a clinical trial or just by chance. We will be using x-rays, CT scans, and MRI to monitor for bone and cartilage formation. These tests will be done at baseline, which is at the time of enrollment, at week six, which is at the time at the end of treatment, and week 12, after the six-week follow-up period. We will also be assessing symptoms of the flare-up, like pain and swelling, and range of motion at the flare-up site. The patients will be asked to complete a number of questionnaires designed to assess the amount of physical limitations the patient is experiencing, as well as other general health measures. One of these questionnaires, the FOP Physical Function Questionnaire, was developed specifically by Clementia with the help of the IFOPA in FOP patients. Finally, each patient will have a physical exam, ECG, and safety labs performed during the study to monitor for side effects. Although this seems like a lot of assessments for patients to undergo, especially those who live far away, we have tried to design this clinical trial to answer the question we are asking, but not to put undue burden on the patient. There are five visits in total over the 12 weeks. Some of the initial screening activities can be performed at the patient's home to increase the chance the patient would qualify for the clinical trial before he or she was asked to travel to a clinical site. Some of the interim visits, those on day 14 and 28, can be performed completely at the patient's home by a skilled nurse. So the patient will be required to come to the site on three occasions over the 12 weeks. If a patient lives far from the clinical site, their travel arrangements, including airfare if necessary, and hotel accommodations for them and a caregiver will be arranged and paid for by Clementia. What if a patient experiences any problems during the clinical trial, and what about when the trial is over? We do know a bit about the safety profile of paloveratine due to the previous development program in COPD. The most frequent side effects associated with paloveratine include effects on the skin and mucous membranes. For example, inside of your nose, your mouth, dry skin, dry lips, itching, rash, redness of the skin, flaking and peeling of the skin, inflammation of the lips, dry mouth and dry eyes. There are other potential side effects associated with the class of medications paloveratine belongs to, the retinoids. And these will be carefully described in the informed consent process when the patient is being considered for enrollment in the clinical trial. The patient will have the opportunity to discuss with the clinical trial personnel what these potential health risks are. Finally, there are potential risks associated with participating in any clinical trial like blood draws, radiation exposure from the x-rays and CT scans. But again, these will be carefully described to the patient at the time of the informed consent 
Now, if patients have any problems during the clinical trial, they should discuss these with the investigator or other clinical site personnel. Any problems will be carefully evaluated and treated as necessary. And of course, the patient may choose to stop participating in the clinical trial at any time. Those successfully completing the 12 weeks will be asked to participate in an extension study that will continue to follow their progress for an additional 12 months. During this 12-month period, participants would be eligible to receive paloveratine should they experience another flare-up. Participation in this extension study is voluntary and will be discussed with the patient at the final visit of the Phase II clinical trial. What clinical sites are enrolling patients into this clinical trial, and what about patients outside of the U.S. or France? There are three sites that will be enrolling patients in this clinical trial. The University of Pennsylvania with the investigators Dr. Robert Pignolo and Dr. Fred Kaplan. The University of California, San Francisco, investigator Dr. Ed Zhao, and Hôpital Necar in Paris, France, investigator Dr. Jean-Vierre Bouja. Due to geography, patients living in France or the U.S. will have an easier time participating in this trial. Patients who live outside the U.S. or France may be considered for enrollment into the trial. However, there are many practical challenges for these patients to successfully participate in the clinical trial. These include rigorous travel requirements during a flare-up, the patient must be able to arrive at the clinical site, undergo all screening activities, and start receiving the study medication within seven days of the start of a flare-up. Additionally, the patient must be able to come to the clinical site for all the required visits during the 12-week clinical trial, whether by commuting or relocating near the clinical site for the full 12 weeks. But any patient who qualifies for the study and can meet all the study requirements can participate. This is a phase two, double-blind, placebo-controlled clinical trial of paloveratine in FOP patients at the time of a flare-up. The purpose is to determine whether paloveratine will have an effect on the formation of new bone during and following a flare-up, at what dose and with what associated side effects. Patients who are at least 15 years old are experiencing a flare-up of the shoulders, arms, hips, or legs, and for whom study medication can be started within seven days of the start of the flare-up, will be randomized to receive either paloveratine or placebo for six weeks with an additional six-week follow-up. 24 patients will be enrolled into the study, 18 randomized to one of three doses of paloveratine, and six randomized to placebo. Any patient who completes this 12-week double-blind clinical trial can then participate in a 12-month open-label extension study. Should patients have more questions about the trial we discussed today or about the paloveratine development program, they can do the following. Contact your local primary care physician who should be able to assist you in obtaining more information. Visit www.clinicaltrials.gov and type in the keyword paloveratine, or contact Clementia Pharmaceuticals directly. Thank you.